Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Beta Test, released in the year 2015. The movie begins with an interview of Andrew Kincaid, the CEO of global game developer Sentinel, the world's most rapidly growing video game company. Kincaid recently made headlines against the preservation of the right to bear arms. He believes that gun ownership in the U.S. is an obsolete tradition which can't protect Americans. Hence, he has proposed a solution to contain violence to video games. If someone wants to shoot someone, they can play Sentinel's video game. Elsewhere, Sentinel's top security officer, Orson Creed, is seen watching the interview with his wife, Abby. He watches as the reporter asks Kincaid about Orson pushing to move Sentinel into military contracts. Soon, Abby starts preparing for them to leave for somewhere in a hurry. She urges Orson to hurry up, but he's glued to the screen, diligently listening to every word Kincaid is speaking. Kincaid responds to the reporter that Orson and him fall on different sides of the aisle, and this isn't the first time Orson tried to extract an intellectual property. However, Kincaid promises that he'll make sure it will be Orson's last attempt. Orson gets tense after watching the interview, and Abby comforts him. She tells him that she's glad he's not like Kincaid. Orson and Abby then proceed to leave with their packed suitcase, but a group of armed men force their way into their home and take Abby hostage. Orson tries to pull out a knife in self-defense, but he's knocked out by one of the goons. The movie then cuts to a Sentinel employee named Bernard, dropping a package to video game champion and the company's very own beta tester, Max Troy. The package is the latest Sentinel game that Max is set to beta test. As Max inserts the game into his computer, he receives a call from his female Sentinel tech support worker called Princess. Max has never seen her, but over the years he has developed feelings for her. After his little pre-game ritual, Max turns on the game and Princess tells him that unlike other games, he can't modify this game, much to his dismay. She also tells him that this game is the one in which players get to be in the real world. The scene then cuts back to Orson's home that has been completely ransacked by the goons. Abby watches as the goons attach a device on an unconscious Orson's neck. They turn on the device before leaving with Abby in a truck. As Orson gains consciousness, Max begins playing the game. Max instantly loves the game's style and finds it realistic. He also finds it odd that the game has no menu, no options, and no loading time. Max picks up a picture in the game and notices that it's Orson and his wife, Abby. Max's character then checks himself out in the mirror and notes that he can see the anger in the character. Max also notices blood on the walls, but he brushes it aside. Max explores his video game character's house and comes across a mobile phone in the kitchen that says, Play Me. In the video, one of the goons from earlier in the movie named Zane addresses Orson, who is revealed to be Max's video game character. It turns out that the events happening within the game are being reflected in the real world. The man tells Orson that they've got a series of tests waiting for him. Orson will have 90 minutes to complete an objective, and if he fails, Abby will lose one part of her body per objective. Orson's mission one is to get inside National Bank, which is about to be robbed, undetected, and retrieve the contents of safety deposit box 1121. Orson is sweating profusely, but Max is unaware that the game is synced to real life. Max guides Orson out of the house and into the car parked outside. He can't seem to figure out how to start the car, and Princess comes to the rescue and offers to stay with him throughout the game. As Max's character leaves, the media reports a robbery in the South Town branch of National Bank. After arriving at the bank, Max looks for a safe entry, and he eventually sneaks into the bank through a window as the robbery is going down. He crawls through the bank and comes across a bank employee trying to escape the robbers. Max asks the lady about the safety deposit box 1121. The lady calls him crazy and warns him that he's going to get himself killed. However, Orson insists, and the lady directs him to her desk. Orson grabs the keys from the drawer and heads to the locker room. As he gets closer to the box, Max momentarily loses signal as Orson gains consciousness and tries to remove the device on his neck. 
However, Max quickly gains control again and opens the deposit box. Inside, he finds a gun and a note that instructs him to kill the robbers and take the money. Princess reminds Max not to kill any hostages, as it would lead him to failing the mission. Max tells her to relax, saying he can always reload and autosave the game. One by one, Max starts taking down the robbers as he makes his way to the money. The hostages scream in horror as Orson and the robbers exchange fire. Max eventually grabs the money and flees in the car. After getting to a safe place, Max decides to pause the game and take a snack break. However, he isn't able to pause the game and Princess offers to look into it. Max goes over to his kitchen and sees the lady from the bank on TV giving an interview to a news channel about the robbery. She recounts Orson Creed saving her life. It finally dawns on Max that the events in the video game are being reflected in real life. Scared, Max proceeds to call the police, but the 911 operator tells him to sit down and play the game. Max confronts Princess about the game and she tells him to keep playing, but Max proceeds to turn the game off. Suddenly, Zane shows up on the screen and tells him to listen very carefully. Max is told that if he tries to turn off the game or call the authorities, Zane will kill Princess and frame Max for robbing the bank. Max also learns that the money he robbed from the bank has been deposited in his bank account, and Zane's henchmen have surrounded his property. Left with no choice, Max reluctantly continues playing the game, and Zane orders him to go to a private school a few miles north, which is about to be shot up. While driving to the school, Max calls Princess out for being a part of this, and she explains that she didn't have a choice, but Max doesn't believe her. After reaching the school, Orson is ordered to protect the shooter from the police. He sneaks into the school and eventually comes across the school shooter. He tries to stop the shooter, but the boy pleads with Orson to let him go, saying Zane would kill the mother. Orson lets the boy go and comes under attack by school security. Orson easily takes them down and tearfully watches as the boy kills more children. After Max reluctantly helps the school shooter escape, Zane proceeds to give him another mission, but Max abruptly hangs up Zane's call and dials his own phone number, despite Princess's protests. Max finally speaks to Orson and tells him about everything. The movie then cuts to Kincaid's apartment, where he has held Abby hostage. It is revealed that Kincaid and Abby have a history. Kincaid asks her if Orson is aware about their past relationship, to which she reacts angrily. Meanwhile, Max guides Orson back to his home and fights off Zane's henchmen. After defeating the goons, Orson finally meets Max, but he isn't able to speak due to the device on his neck. Max asks Princess to unblock Orson's speech frequency. When Princess hesitates, Max threatens to sever ties with her and she is forced to comply. Orson is finally able to speak and he suspects that Max's house is bugged. Max finds it hard to believe and Orson reveals that he created every security protocol for Sentinel, including bugging. Everything Max has received from Sentinel can be used to monitor him. After debugging the apartment, Max and Orson sit down for a drink and talk about Sentinel. Orson reveals that he created the technology that connects people to video game characters, and it is called Control X. It was a prototype meant for surveillance, but Orson believed that it was better suited for the military because he's a former soldier and lost a couple of really close friends to war. Control X is about making stronger soldiers with fast reflexes and two sets of eyes. Orson says that Kincaid doesn't care about gun control and has some ulterior motives. Max then notices the chip on Orson's neck, which makes loud beeping noises when the remote control is brought close to it. Orson asks Max to remove the chip, but Max is hesitant and asks for a moment to prepare himself. He goes out, and for some reason, he drags one of the unconscious henchmen named Professional inside the house. Suddenly, Kincaid's live feed is disrupted, and when it continues, Kincaid learns that Orson has managed to remove the chip. Left with no choice, Kincaid finally reveals himself to Max and threatens to kill Princess if he doesn't comply. To prove what he's capable of doing, Kincaid kills a random female Sentinel employee. Left with no choice, Max agrees to play the game again. Through the game, 
Abby gives Max the next task, for which Orson is to go to the ground floor of the Needle, where Caleb Angelo is having dinner. There, Orson is supposed to kill Angelo. It is then revealed that unbeknownst to Kincaid, Orson has inserted the Sentinel chip in Professional's neck and has also figured out Kincaid's intentions. He reveals that Angelo owns 51% of the world's largest server file, while Kincaid only owns 40%. With Angelo out of the way, Kincaid could scoop up all of the shares and gain control over the world. After learning about Kincaid's evil plans, Max guides Professional to the Needle, while Orson goes to confront Kincaid and save his wife. On his way to the Needle, Max gets a call from Princess, who reveals that she is safe now and offers to help him. Max intercepts Angelo's motorcade near the famous skyscraper and kills Angelo. However, Kincaid gets suspicious when Angelo doesn't recognize Orson before he's killed. Orson arrives outside Kincaid's office, and Zane and his henchmen try to stop him. However, Orson easily neutralizes the goons and heads to Kincaid's office. There, Kincaid threatens to shoot Abby, and Orson is forced to surrender himself. Moreover, Zane's other henchman, named The Surgeon, has subdued Max in his apartment. Orson asks Kincaid why he shot up a school, and the latter reveals that the children are casualties of war meant to pressure the government into passing the gun control bill, which will limit guns to games. An unhinged Kincaid says sometimes to make things better, you need to start by making them worse. Orson argues that Kincaid has no right to control people even if they mess up sometimes. As Orson keeps Kincaid engaged, Max covertly drives Professional to his home right under Surgeon's nose. Before the goon realizes it, Professional appears and takes him out. At the Sentinel HQ, Orson takes Kincaid on while Abby kills the latter's goon. As Orson and Kincaid fight, Max arrives at the HQ. Kincaid almost kills Orson until Max shows up and shoots him dead. Max becomes the CEO of Sentinel and promises to return the company back to its roots, humanity. That was all from the video, I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.